Previously, I talked about uh, some of the other laws of exponents um, that are not highlighted here in uh, part one of this video. Uh, in the second part here, I'm going to talk about some of the other laws of exponents that we can have um, that, that could help us solve uh, different problems where we have to simplify exponents. So uh, I'm going to begin here with this first one. And this first one oftentimes gets confused with this one up here. But what this law of exponents says is if I ever have a power raised to another power, so if I have x to the third and I squared that, I'll, I'll write this out longhand first, but what we would have to do then is we'd have to write out x to the third twice, and then now this appears actually kind of like this rule where I can add the exponents and get x to the sixth. Now, that would be the long way of doing it. The shortcut is, if we have a power raised to a power, we can just multiply the exponents. Three times two gives us this exponent of six. So another example of this would be if I had um, x to the fifth to the seventh power, that would equal x to the 35th power, okay? So the key there is multiply the exponents whenever we have a power raised to another power different than this first one we talked about uh, in the last video, okay? Uh, and the next two I kind of think go hand in hand. Um, if you ever have something in parentheses raised to a power, you have to take each thing in there to that power. So if I have three x squared, and let's say I squared that, I'm gonna have to square the three and square the x squared. So in this case, if I square three, I get nine, and here I'm going to have to multiply the exponents so I would get x to the fourth for this one. Okay. Similarly, if this was a fraction, so if I had, uh, let's say, 5 over uh, n, let's make this an n to the fifth, and I raise this to the third power, I would have to take the 5 to the third power and the n to the fifth to the third power. So here, this would be 5 to the third is 125, 5 times 5 times 5. On the bottom, n to the fifth, if I multiply the exponents here, I'd get n to the 15th power, and that would be this one simplified, okay? So again, that would just be a quick example of each of those. We got one more here to look at, and this one is actually pretty easy once you get the gist of it. Anything to the zero power is equal to one. So an example of this would be, uh, let's see, let's change colors here. If I had 10 to the zero power, that's just equal to one. If I had, you know, x to the fifth, in parentheses to the zero power, that's still just equal to one. Where it gets a little tricky is if I have something like, let's say five x y to the zero power, then only the part that's attached to this zero exponent is going to become a one. So in this case, this is an imaginary x to the one here. So this would be five x times one, which is just five x. So it doesn't make everything in there a one, it'll only make things that are raised to the zero power a one. Okay, so again, that's uh, one of each of the different laws of exponents I wanted to talk about here today, so let's get to it. Okay, so if I raise a power to a power, again, if I have x cubed and I square it, or let's actually start over here with the, with the three example. If I take three to the fourth and I square it, that would be like multiplying it by itself twice. And we said earlier that this is, you know, there's four threes here being multiplied here together. And then there's four more threes being multiplied here together. So that's eight threes. The shortcut being that I can take four times two to get that exponent. So for number one here, the shortcut would be multiply the exponents, which is x to the sixth. Over here, we're going to have to take two things to the third power. And we gotta be careful here because we can never take a little number times a big number here. We're not gonna take three times two and get six. We know how to take two to the third. It's two times two times two, it's eight. This is where we use the shortcut because these are both little numbers. So I can take the five times the three. These are both exponents, so I'm allowed to multiply them. That would be x to the 15th, okay? Now number three, again, if we look at this one carefully, you're, you're gonna have to be careful here. So if we multiply, we get negative six. And then if we look at the x's, it's tempting to say here x to the 12th. However, notice that this problem doesn't look like these other ones we've already done. There's no exponent on the outside of these parentheses that is raising either of these to a power. 
So this is actually a review problem from part one of the video. We actually have to add these exponents because there's no exponent on the outside that we're raising these to. So this would be x to the eighth. So it would be negative six, x to the eighth. Okay, and that's a little review on uh, raising a power to a power. Now we're gonna look at, you know, just taking a number of things inside parentheses to a power. So if I have six d to the fifth squared, we'll start with this one here. So six d to the fifth, again, I've got to square each thing in here. So six squared is 36. Again, I'm not taking six times two, it's six squared. d to the fifth squared, we multiply the exponents. That would be d to the 10th. Okay, next one, we've got uh, two x to the fifth over three y squared cubed. So we got to cube everything in here. Let's start with the two. Two cubed is eight. X to the fifth cubed, we need to multiply the exponents and get a 15 here. On the bottom, three cubed is 27, not nine. We're not taking three times three. And then on the bottom here, uh, y squared to the third would be, multiply the exponents, we get y to the sixth, and that would be this one. So we got one more to go here. Now, notice there's a negative exponent on this one. I'll show you two options you have here for this one. Um, first off, we could raise everything to the negative two power, which will give me four to the negative two. Notice I'm not trying to jump right to like one over 16 here. That, that doesn't really help us when we have a big fraction like this. It can sometimes get more confusing, but uh, more on that in a little bit. So x squared um, to the negative two would be x to the negative four. Five to the negative two we'll have here and this would be y to the negative 14. So with negative exponents, it's good to write out some extra steps. Now, what we're gonna have to do is all these negative exponents are gonna have to move to the opposite side of a fraction and become positive. So this four squared on the top, or four to the negative two on the top should become a four to the positive two on the bottom. Same thing with this x to the negative four needs to move to the bottom and become positive. These are both in the bottom so these need to move to the top. So I would have a five squared on the top and a y to the 14th on the top. Whenever it switches sides, it becomes positive. Our final step then of the problem is just to evaluate five squared and four squared. So this is just going to be 25 y to the 14th over 16 x to the fourth and we're done. Okay, so the key with negative exponents is leave the negatives there, make them positive, and then evaluate any numbers that you need to. Now, uh, an easier way to do this problem, I think personally, would be this. If we had 4x squared over 5y to the seventh, and we took this to the negative two, whenever you have a big fraction or a big parentheses to a negative power, you can begin by flipping this entire fraction or this entire thing in parentheses over. So if this whole thing is raised to the negative power, let's just make this 5y to the seventh over 4x squared. We just flipped the entire thing. We took the reciprocal. And then this 2, now that we flipped it, can become positive. So if you ever have a big fraction raised to a power, you can always flip that whole fraction over and make that uh, exponent positive. It makes it a little bit easier. So um, again, that's just a quick, quick little review on um, how you can you know raise a, a quantity to a power and one thing I do want to note here is that this has to be a monomial that we're raising to a power if we have a uh, polynomial with multiple terms we'll talk more about this later in the chapter here um, but if I have something with multiple terms raised to a power this is not equal to x squared plus 25 that's a very common mistake that people make there's going to be a different way we do that however if you don't see a plus sign, and these are all terms that are joined by uh, multiplication, there's no subtraction or addition or anything in the parentheses, then you're okay to square everything in there.